Hey, it's Whit Hayden. One of my favorites, one of my buddies. Yeah, right. yeah we can see it. You can start, you know. I mean, right. Let's try to make this easy. This, you haven't done a damn thing all night. <laughs> What's your name? Justine. Justine? Yeah. Justine. Take any card out of the pack that you would like. Don't let me influence you. <laughs> Just take any one. Doesn't matter to me. Just any one. Uh, oh, God. You're kind of I a love that picky bit. woman. You're going to stare. I found that right. Yeah, go ahead. Take one you like. Get one you like. <laughs> Excellent choice of Jack of Hearts. What I'd like you to do is take this pen and write your name on the face of the card. Now this, Justine, is the face. Do not write on the back, just on the <laughs> face, because it's considered cheating um, if you mark them on the back. And he just got that sermon, didn't he? It's amazing how many times people <laughs> write on the back of the card. Some people are so particular. They borrow that. <laughs> no, that's how I ended up with property in Vegas. One of the hotels is holding my luggage. <laughs> I'm not sitting over a friendly game, too, and they're not that damn friendly, folks. I was on the, um, I was up in the suite up on the 14th floor of one of those hotels in Las Vegas playing poker with the boys. You know, a friendly game. The house had nothing to do with it. And there was some minor discrepancy over how many playing cards should actually be in a deck of playing cards. <laughs> I, I, laughed, I laughed too, but they took it really serious. <laughs> they, were, they were drawing knives and breaking beer bottles. It was the biggest brouhaha you ever saw. I had to throw a chair through the window just to escape with my butt. But luckily, it was the Luxor. <laughs> it's a bumpier ride than you would think. It only looks smooth from a distance. <laughs> now, your car, oh, look at this, a smiley face and everything. Justine, you'll recognize that if you see it again, right? I'm going to place it into the pack right about here. Ooh. You see about where that went in? Not on top, though, right? It went in the middle. Oh. Not on What's top. That? Boom. <laughs> However, folks, if I tap the deck at a specific resonance, that will cause the molecules of the chosen card to break up into their atomic constituents, traverse through the rest of the pack, and reconstitute themselves on top of the pack like so. Boom. I'll do it again. Yeah. All right, stop it right there. Wow, yeah. he, he's at the bar, by the way. He's at the bar at the basement of the Magic Castle, the old Hatton, uh, the W.C. Fields bar where we used to work all the time, right? So there's about three rows of people right in front of him. So they're all drinking. They're all close. They're not socially distanced, right, Adam? That's right. They're definitely not socially distanced. <laughs> uh, one other thing to keep in mind about Pop when he's getting going here is that, uh, you know, Pop Hayden is a, a accentuated version of how wit always performed magic he always had the same general he was always a southern gentleman he was always kind of having you on right uh and if you ask a uh, wit pop he will tell you putting the costume on and really embodying this character really allowed him to just amp it up to 11 so that's another interesting thing to think about just getting going now adam he seemed to be fascinated here by this depth illusion yeah i was i thought it was a really interesting choice for a very first phase of your ambitious and, uh, you know, just, he just knocks it out right at the beginning and gets rid of it. Some people sort of uh, save, that, save that for the second or third phase, you know, of their ambitious card routine. Well, there's two things here, right? Not only he starts with tilt, then he shows the top card is not there, which a lot of people don't do that in the first phase. Then he immediately does the magic move and goes right into the double lift for the very first phase. Yeah. So, the reasoning for that is, of course, is that the heat will never get any lower, right? So not only has he got himself all, all set up for the next phase instantaneously, but he has actually done the double lift to display the card at the clean, in, in a time when there will never be less suspicion. I wonder, yeah. Aaron, if you've ever had conversations with, with Wit or with Pop about that unique handling of the double lift. He's definitely handling it in a different way than what we teach and what we normally see people do as a double turnover. I think it's important to keep in mind with uh, Wit or Pop that uh, he's always been equally comfortable or more comfortable on stage than in close-up. 
So uh, I don't know what he'll say about this specifically, but I do know that that double was real designed to be highly visible way up high. And of course, in that room, if you're down here, uh, you're going to lose a lot, you know, but I can certainly imagine Wit, who, who gave Adam and I street magic lessons when we were younger as well, uh, would know that that's definitely, it was a lift, right? It was not a turnover. Yeah. It was a lift and it was definitely designed to be seen by everyone. Yeah. Right? What will be interesting to see as he carries forward is when he, most people like to use that double lift to show the card's not there, you know, as in that's not your card. And then to get to that clean moment where the card uh, is your card and then sort of move into the next phase from switching out from there. It'll be very interesting to see the back and forth in Pop's routine if he, if he favors that or right. if he comes back and uses this version again. Right. And I know you weren't ready. <laughs> The Jack of Hearts with Justine's name written on it, so colorfully, goes into the pack down here. It cannot be on the top. When I tap the deck, it will jump to all the other cards and land on top like so. Wow. I will do it slow motion for those of you in the cheaper seat. And we have our answer, right? Yeah, that's he it. Did, he went and did it exactly the same way again. Yep. He yep. likes it. And this is something you find a lot of experts go in this direction. Tamaris likes this stuff too, because I think you have to be pretty dang good at the double lift before you start. Uh, when you have no fear of the double lift ever again, then the idea of doing it for the actual revelation, ta-da, is much less up, uh, upsetting to you. And of course, it always sets you up for the next phase already. So I think that's why the experts like it that way. And he really knows his audience too. Like, like, like Pop knows his audience. He knows what, what, how he needs to stand, what he needs to do. He really understands theater and the stage. It's really, you could really tell with his body language, like how yeah, he's, he's on stage. Yeah. Yeah. He's in, he's in that thriller <laughs> position. <laughs> yep. And, and right. those people in there are partying, they are drinking. It's a good time room. And you could see all that beautiful setup he did. I mean, so much fun and banter and byplay. It really is a party room, and he, he's really making the most of it. Don't take your eyes off my hands, though, because I'll cheat you in a second. <laughs> I can't help it. It's my nature. <laughs> like the scorpion. <laughs> like the scorpion? I don't even know what I'm saying. <laughs> now, watch folks. Close it, Jack Arn. Go slow motion in the pack. Don't take your eyes off my hands. Here, here it comes. This is it. Slow motion. Jack of Hearts goes slow motion in the pack. If it's down here, it cannot be where? On top. Physically impossible. You push it into the pack. You tap the deck. It will jump up through all the other cards and land on top like that. Wow, so. yeah. Woo! I'll do it face up. So, yeah. So that's killer. So he's got the pacing on that is really beautiful. And he's got that that lovely thing at the end. He just throws it on the table. I mean, there's just nothing to see there. Absolute uniformity too, right? Absolute uniformity. He came there. He went there, right? And I, I don't everybody we got to hear. Mm -hmm. And then he was way up there. And then he, you know, came all the way across and... Bam. But he definitely turned that double into a single that time. And it was on top, right? Did he, did he leave it out jogged before yes. he, he did the cutting like that? Yeah. Something, something, like, something like that. And you'll notice he's keeping... It's like that Lorraine thing we were talking about yesterday. The whole time. It most definitely is. And it's the big secret of that one is it allows you, unlike a lot of other ambitious phases, the reason we like it so much is because you really get to see the card going in. So you're using the double in a different way, right? Normally after you do the double lift, you can't show the face. So the question might be, is he really putting it in there? Well, if you see it going in, right? And I, I think it's really good if you put that way up high and he put, had it near the top, because if it's really near the top, then you can justify, oh, wait, let's put it way down low, make sure it's really buried in there, right? So that's a, a rare phase that lets you do that, right? Yeah, yeah. All right, let's keep going. This Notice how he's got his hands up the whole time. Like he's doing the whole routine above his head, essentially. 
look, it actually goes face up in the pack so you can see it's in the middle. I haven't cheated yet. <laughs> okay, that's stupid. <laughs> face is like a monument to arrested development. I'm not kidding. You know, when I was like nine years old, folks, I told my mother, um, I want to be a magician when I grow up. She said, nonsense. You can't do both. <laughs> Turns out she was right, folks. You're only young once, but you can be immature practically your whole life. Watch closely. We turn the five of spades face up. We cover that card, tap the deck. The jack of hearts comes back to the top. Still, some people think this is sleight of hand or trickery to prove it's not just steam. I'm going to take your card with your um, name written on it. I want you to pick up about half of the deck. Pick up half the cards. Square them up. Tap the deck once on the top. Perfect. That was great. That was great. You have excellent resume. Turn over the top card. Show it to everybody. Look at you. Sleight of hand, why? Because you didn't do any sleight of hand. So it has to be what? Magic. Magic. No. Science. Magic. It could be trickery. Maybe I have more than one of those jack of hearts with Justine's name written on it in her. Ooh, that's interesting. Her handwriting. I wouldn't do that. I'm just saying it. <laughs> a possibility. Anywhere you pointed to, Brittany just. Uh... I've never actually seen that in an ambitious sequence before. Have you? You know, that always strikes me, you know, at, at, at its core, Svengali deck demo is an ambitious sequence, right? And a good Svengali deck demo is designed as long as possible to make it feel like it's an ordinary deck, right? So you don't start blatantly showing a bunch of duplicates, right? So there comes that moment in the Svengali deck where you might choose to, to say, you know, in fact, they all look like the card, but that's sort of like coming up toward a crescendo. What's nice about Wit doing this method is, I think it really plays like it's an illusion. Sort of like when you do cup through cup or the stick through cup, it's like you're winking at the audience and you're saying, hey, that's just a little sleight of hand, it's fun. You know, but you're not asking them to believe, look clean, they're all wild, like the wild card or something, right? Right, totally. Did you see Wit had this wonderful cover for doing the pass there? I don't know if y'all thought that was as great as I did. No, but it, blew, it blew right by me. I didn't see it. But being down there, turning it face up, right? And then by coming all the way up here, back to his show position, like it doesn't, you could see it or not see it. There'd be nothing to see, right? It doesn't matter what method you're using. He's down here. That's happening. He's getting a break one above. And as he's coming back up here, like it doesn't even matter what method you do, right? Before he, I thought it was also interesting. He didn't do that as like a paintbrush change. He squared it up, snapped his fingers and plucked it right off and it changed. So he's really not laying on it like it's meant to be visual card magic. He's keeping the mystery at all times. And that time it was so much fun. He turned it over and then everyone was laughing. And then he realized, oh, wait a minute. I didn't get that clarity I need. Look, there's your card, right? That's your card. You cut off the top half of the deck, you know, and then he went in and then shifted it all down there. So that's the major escalation. That's like the plot point is what's bringing it from him now down into you. Just touch one, Brittany. Just touch which one? This one? Which one? That one. <laughs> You're making this hard for the camera. Which one is pointing? <laughs> this one here? Yeah. Okay, good. <laughs> the card you're thinking of, was it? Oh, four spades. Hey, is that a new ambitious <laughs> card this time? The four, was it? The four spades? Uh, I'm, yes, yeah, so I'm a little unclear as to what actually just happened. Well, I think he may have, you know, remember he hadn't had it signed, right? So he's really either vamping right, which is possible, I'm doing one of his many sequences over the year. But this particular routine is not based on having the card signed, right? So I think he may have just switched to having her, now you take a card. And if you think about it and how Wit thinks about card magic, if you take a look at his Chicago Surprise, 
wit is definitely a proponent of the effect of a trick being different than the plot, right? Mm -hmm. So, so when he, I say, what's the effect of your Chicago surprise? Wit says that you can do anything with cards. He loves that trick so much and it changes effect two or three times on the way through. It's all surprises, right? Card changes color, card jump, another card jumps to your pocket. Then either you reveal a card or they change places. So in this case, you know, it looks like he's just had a card selected. It seemed for all like his holy, like he messed up his control. Did it, couldn't, it looked like he couldn't find it. And now he looks like he's in the middle of either a pre-planned or legitimate rescue sequence. You press pause at the most perfect possible time. Look at that sweet right hand coming out of that deck mid-side steal. Ooh, you're right. Was that wrong of me to say? I don't think so, no. But you can see that whole grip. And if you want, guys, the towel is that left thumb. Check it out. Someone's got to hold on to those cards while you're doing something, while you're, while you're shenanigating that hard. You know what I mean? <laughs> that's hardcore, dude. Good spot, Aaron. Good, good eye. I, I feel like that's not somehow that might not even be. No one's watching this unless they're really into magic. Like, really? Oh, so, yeah, totally. Like, so. You think of that? I'm a genius. <laughs> <laughs> well, I was surprised. I was thinking we'd get more than one of those uh, jack of hearts. I guess what? I have the one jack of hearts over here in my wallet. What? In a sealed compartment of my wallet. Inside the sealed envelope. What? <laughs> Notarized. <laughs> Give this a little tear. Go ahead. Take the card out. Show it to everybody. Is that your handwriting? It is sealed, isn't it? Yes, I know. Take the card out. Show it to everybody. Is that your handwriting? Yeah. Oh, it was a signed card. I totally forgot. I couldn't see yeah. it. He did have the card signed. Was that the original ambitious card? Yeah. Yeah. So what, what was going on with that second selection? I think it's exactly what you said. I think he, I think he missed a beat and had to gabble and, and, had to, and had to steal it out there for card to wallet. You know, it happens so often at the Magic Castle. You know, of all places, you're having a party with the people. You're really in the moment. You either forget to do the slight or you forget the exact moment when you should do it or you forget something entirely that was really important for later. You find that you're about to reveal a folded up card, but you haven't even gotten it from where it needs to be and folded it yet, right? And you're having so much fun with the people. Uh, it looks like, I have no idea where that second selection came from, but I do know that in a situation where the crowd has given you so much love, it's sometimes important to go with it. And that's when it really is convenient to be able to work with the sleight of hand in real time, you know? Like what, do you, what do you think happened, Alex? Do you think he, he, he missed it there somehow? And he was just re-, re I, Honestly, it seems like to me he was using that moment to recall an effect that happened earlier. Which one did you pick before? Oh, you got the four, four of clubs or the four of spades? And I think it was just what you just said. Use that moment, talking about a previous trick to get himself ready, catch back up, and get ready to palm that card out so he could load the wallet. I, I think it's what you're saying. It's just I think he was just referring to a, a previous trick. And Clive, Clive Howard says there's a good reason to try and get a spectator to sign a low spot card. You know, Billy McComb was a big hand, a big fan of a low spot card uh, and a spot card in general because, you know, he told me when you were doing the invisible deck on stage to make sure you asked a person to think of a card with spots on it so that he could ask how many spots were on it because all of the face cards look alike uh, on stage. And I think Wit is highly sensitive. I mean, it, he really does feel more like a stage show in there than it should. It's, it's like he's up on a rostrum busking or something. You know, and behind, if I recall correctly, behind that bar, there's like a, a step up. So you're, you're above the people, right? I mean, you're, you're, you are on a stage. You ought to be because also the bars are up. Like, you know, close up is down here just a little bit so you can work. But a bar is like not really super comfortable, at least for a guy my height, Alex. You know, on the internet, friends, Alex and I look like we're the same height. Check it out. Say something, Alex. Hey. Looks like we're the same height, doesn't it? That is an illusion. <laughs> hey, on our YouTube channel, uh, uh, Paul Susie says, uh, 
Pop is an amazing magician, so fun to watch. His jokes are amazing too, and he loves his persona. And he was saying that that cover was coming up to the left. Only a magician would pick that out. If they were really paying attention, it would fly right by the spectators. Uh, so that's exactly right, uh, Paul. Uh, Aaron, Aaron what spotted would that. What um, would, yeah, there's no, there was nothing any of us would have even caught. The only reason even that we're getting as far as we are is because it's literally we're here on the task of watching like a, like we, I don't know about y'all, but it's been 20 years since I even watched magic that carefully. I, I enjoy going on the ride and wit, of course, I can't help it. I, I, I call him wit. He actually called to ask how we were a few days ago, Adam. Uh, he's a very thoughtful fellow. Um, but there's like no one more fun to watch in magic. He's got so much love for his audience coming out of every pore when he works. Um, I'm just curious, how many of our members that are here today got to actually see Pop at the summit a couple years ago, at the CC summit at our intimate little convention a couple years ago? He was so cool, wasn't he? Mm -hmm. He is so amazing and, and such a giving guy. Like he was willing to stop and talk with everybody and talk about anything and just a great, great human. I love Wit. He's so good. It is is that the end of that particular clip, Adam? You know, I sort sort of love about it that that was, I think, to some degree, an ad hoc ending, and that Wit can basically just take any show where he showed up and you turned on a camera, and it doesn't have to be the version that's in the book or in the notes or the video. You can get just what you get. It's sort of like a master chef can just say, "Well, I'll feed you." and then chop up some stuff that's available in the kitchen and just bring it out to you. And you feel like, whoa, no restaurant would ever prepare to feed me so well. So, you know, we may have gotten an out. We may have gotten wits just, oh, to hell with it, card to wallet ending, but there'd be no way to ever know. You feel like you got the whole beautiful thing, you know? Uh, master magician, yeah. He, he really is a master magician and a man that appreciates the side steal. Yeah, that's right. And a good stand-up double lift, you know? Just goes to show that if you don't, if you're not using the double turnover, if you're not letting the cards sit, if you're not putting them on the table, if you're not really using the double turnover so that it really does what a double lift can do, and you got the people up there, you'll also notice, watch that thing again, uniformity. Like, Wit has gone over to using this double turn to double lift display but he's using it pretty much everywhere right the times when he varies from it are so small that it feels the same to the audience so a, a, ma a lesson from a master and masterful magic definitely definitely we're so lucky we live in a time where we where we have access to watch that anytime we want uh so uh yeah yeah william's right it feels like we were on a road we had so many choices of roads to travel but he led us to one that was the most beautiful yeah it's a it's a it's a it's an interesting thing to be uh to, it would be an interesting thing to be inside wit's head to, to know what decisions he's making on it on spur of the moment like that to know where to stop a routine where how far it should go all those things you know i bet that there's not much thinking involved there i bet that at the moment it's just happening. He's just got so much in his mind that are the ways that it's happened in the past that I think he just is in the moment and he just sees the road and goes down it. Wit is one of those magicians, especially in close up, but, but I think even on stage too. You know, there's a lot of magicians that like to be the same way every time. Mm -hmm. uh, for me, that's not the exciting thing. Uh, and, you know, I, look, there was a long time ago, I used to spend a lot of time with uh, Eric Mead uh, learning about bar magic. And I really learned that if you can just be in with the audience and have the fun with the people and let it be what it is in that moment, that's why you miss double lifts. That's why you lose the card is you're actually playing the people and the magic is a little part of it. You end up with endings that you hadn't planned. You end up with the show not being what you expected, but you end up with a show that is so exhilarating and fun, hopefully not just for you, but for everybody that, if you're watching this and you're ever torn back and forth, I highly suggest you embrace the different show every time. Not that the material's different, but that because you're really there with the people and you're really playing with the people, the show has to be different every time. And as Eric would tell you, they're not always great. They're not always great. They're real great. And sometimes every now and again, they don't connect, but 
I would vote over that over a vanilla show that kind of works all the time, right? I would rather have it be awesome 80% of the time. And then 5% of the time it just crashes because you just fail to connect. It happens, you know? All right. Well, you know, speaking of uh, real, really great ambitious card routines, we've got another one to look at. And this one, you know, this one has just always stood the test of time. I do not know if this is the same, if, if he does this the same way every time or how this works because, well, he's no longer with us. But um, I do remember, uh, you know, seeing this as a child and uh, just being uh, thoroughly amazed. It is absolutely one of my favorites. And our members uh, mentioned that uh, this is an absolute favorite of everyone. So we are going to take a look at probably one of the all-time greatest ambitious card routines right now we're going to take a look at daryl wow i wish i had a better act <laughs> well right now i would like to explain to you how all card tricks are done i can explain them in one word one word is control that's all that happens. The magician controls the cards. Allow me to demonstrate. Would you help me with this one? Mm -hmm. What I need to do is to have one. Sorry, I just want to say right off the bat, notice, just notice the difference in persona there. Like just notice the, the energy, the intensity, the difference in persona, like how they, the choices that those, these two acts have made to present this effect in. And it's effective both ways. It's just that, you know, they've both made very specific choices. Like, you know, you, what you're expecting when you sit down to watch Daryl versus Pop. You know, it's just a different feeling about what kind of magician you're, you're about to spend your time with. One card that we will control. Any card, and because I'm going to have you sign the front of the card, it might be a good idea to get something other than a picture card. A number card would be best. So name any card you'd like, and that's one we'll use. It's up to you. Uh, two of hearts. Ah, one of my personal favorites. <laughs> There's the two of hearts, and would you please, in big, bold letters, sign your name, your front, fir first name on the front side of the card. That'll be perfect. Excellent, nice and big. Now, the reason I have the card spread face upwards is so that you can see that that is the only two of hearts in the entire deck. Sometimes I demonstrate this mystery, and people say, oh, well, obviously, you have duplicate cards, but that's the only one. Is it, is it full screen? Can everybody see it full screen? I wonder if some people are on a tablet and that doesn't that that kills the dual display or something. You know. Oh, okay. All right. Like, oh. I, I don't know. I don't know. Like if you happen to be watching on a tablet, you might just be getting one of us or or just the screen of who we're watching. Uh, I know on desktop uh, we're seeing a, a little box of us on the panel in the screen. I think on YouTube you just see one face. Okay. In the big box. All right, just making sure I was uh, making sure I didn't mess anything up. Here we go. All right. Even if I did have a duplicate two of hearts, of course, that's the only one with your name on the front. Okay? Now, what happens is the magician says, put the card back into the deck, and that's where he cheats. <laughs> I'll show you what I mean. It goes in, I'll shuffle them up. Man, you haven't blinked once. <laughs> that's good. So it really is hopelessly lost. The card is not on the bottom or next to the bottom. I mean, it could have been, but it would have been just coincidence. Or the top, it's not near the top. If I want your card, I just snap the fingers and it will rise to the top all by itself. That's the mystery. Now, in slow motion, it looks like this. The two of hearts goes into the center of the deck, about halfway down. All I have to do is snap the fingers. That's all it takes. The card will rise to the top position, and it works every single time. Now, in slow motion, it looks like this. It really goes in, but I'll put it in from the front. Now, obviously, if I do not snap my fingers, it will not rise up to the top of the deck. In fact, it won't even be next to the top. It stays in the middle until I do the secret move. The secret move is nothing more than a snap of the finger, and it's up on the top once again. <laughs> now, anybody can do this. Wow. So, so he is... You know, I haven't really noticed this, but he is moving like, like Daryl moves with a trajectory here, doesn't he? And he doesn't it, give you a chance to say anything. Yeah. And, and it dictates the why he's doing the double lift that way, why he's using that method for the double lift. He's, he's, I think he's blowing past a triple there, right? It's the thing that would describe that speed he was going. I actually blinked for a minute. So if there was a setup between the first and second phases, I missed it, Alex. But it looked like he was going triple, double. So, you know, he shows, shows a triple on top and he's moving. So he's doing the dragon flip, no thumb action, none of that stuff. You know, he's putting it in there and then he's doing it again as fast as you possibly can. None of that thumb action again. Right. 
then he did uh then not on top he did the double lift to show it was not no he had a single on top he did all the way through to a single not a, to that card then what was it not it's on hard <laughs> it's hard to remember it, it was it, not there not there and then he set himself up for that for that next double or triple but you're right adam he's doing three four phases all i know is this he's a vernon student and when you see a Vernon student adopt the drag and flip method, right? That's a perfect example of a guy that's moving so fast. You don't have time to stop and say anything. And you don't, there's not a lot of savoring going on. It's all about half-life in your body. He's plugging in so many effects, right? That you are getting, you don't come down from the first one. So after he does it three times, you're already like, ah. You know? yeah, specifically too, he he uses that thumb count that that thumb count double quite a bit too. So he's got he's got a couple of different variations of the double that he's relying on, and uh, it's interesting to see what, when and where he chooses which one to do. You know, check out. And he's what only he letting people speak when he actually finishes when the card is there. That's when there's interaction, right? In between, there's nothing. There's yeah. no way anyone can say anything. So what you're saying, Alex, is that that every phase up till now has really been one phase. That's right. As far as technique goes, yes. Or as far as the actual structure of the trick, right? It's been like, comes to the top, comes to the top, comes to the top, not on the bop. It's on the top. End phase one. How about that, huh? You're right. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Right. Cool. All right, let's move on. All right. Here hey, Adam, go. I just want to see how, when you turn it back on, I just want to see what the time code is, because we might want to take a look uh, when we're done at that. It's 2.04 right now, so we might uh, remember that and pop back 30 seconds when we're done. All right. This, in fact, would you do me a small favor? Lift off about half of the pack. Perfect. Cover it up yourself. Put all those cards on top. Take the entire deck out of my hands. Just snap your fingers. Perfect. You're unnatural. Turn over the top card. If it worked, bow to your thunderous applause. Ladies and gentlemen, you have a winner. Watch the card very closely. Not yet. <laughs> it goes into the middle, but to be even more fair, I will place it in the middle of all of these cards, then all of these into the middle of all of these cards. Now it's hopelessly lost until, of course, I snap the fingers, then it jumps back up to the top once again, cleverly disguising itself on the way. <laughs> no, perhaps the deck didn't hear. Yeah, yeah, there it was. Uh, here, me... oh, what are we doing? Uh, Start again. There's the. Go ahead. You want to tell him about that? You want to make sure, because we saw this yesterday, right? The yes. card comes to the top. Ta-da. Giant applause. I'm going to take that card and stick it in the center. And everyone's like thinking, well, I go, no, I'm really, it's going in the center. And you can always tell because you get an effect from that, right? Because you don't even have to go, ta-da, there it is. So it's like, okay, the selection comes to the top. Tremendous applause, right? I'm going to take it and stick it in the center again. Really? So God forbid they were out to lunch, you never have to say anything, but if you hear all the audience go, oh, it means that whatever that moment was, you know, you just fake it, right? You literally, the more you fake it, the better, right? So if uh, you're, you're here, right? Notice how I'm faking an old style one. Right, so you just literally don't do nothing, right? Your card. <laughs> Goes in there, watch carefully. And then you go in there, and then he goes into the next phase. It's just tremendous. And you know, he's moving so fast. Yeah, Alex. It's really interesting because that's sort of like a barometer, right? It's a barometer to make sure they're really with you. If they don't react at that moment, you're not doing your job, right? If you do that big feint like that, they, they have to react, or else, you know, you might as well stop doing the trick. <laughs> well, Daryl. Really went, good. I love it. Daryl went by the name Magician's Magician. And he really did. He was a great magician for all audiences. But, you know, his bread and butter was really dazzling magicians. And I think you can see some of the style is affected by that, you know, because he, he at this point, goes into the next phase right after that. He did, what, whether it was three or four phases, all the way to the top. Then he did the first feint. Not yet. Hasn't really gone to the top. Then he brought it up 
to the top and then he finally puts it in the spectator's hands and that was the next phase where we were just at let's see what happens next i love it in the spectator's hands i think it's so awesome <laughs> Well, it's the ten. If I think that he takes so long to get that, that he puts that so late, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Lost until, of course, I snap the fingers. Then it jumps back up to the top once again, cleverly disguising itself on the way. <laughs> <laughs> no, perhaps the deck didn't hear me. Here, let me start again. There's the ten. If I snap it like this and give it a little squeeze, it turns into the two of hearts. Are there any questions up to this point? <laughs> See, I'm just making it up as I go along. Can't even feel it move. Yeah, that's right. And she knows, because you tried, didn't you? You felt it? I didn't. You didn't? Look, I'll tell you what I'll do. This time, I will push the card forward about halfway. I won't use the whole deck. I'll just cover it with a few cards, just a few like that. I'll push it in, give a little snap. It jumps to the top. But actually, this is not the top of the deck. See, this is considered the top of the bottom half. The top of the deck would be this part over here. So watch the top of the deck, and you'll see it every single time. You really will. Hey, Adam, when did he put that deck down? It's, you know, I've never seen a routine where if you literally blink, you will miss an element of the construction, right? Did he have the top of it? He, he, he showed the card, right? He said he was going to push it forward. Then he said he was going to put some more on top, right? No, he took that part and put it on the table. Right. So what did he say when he, that led me thinking that? Then he took the, the single card and put that into the middle of the, the, the packet that you're holding as if he was going to do the same effect again. So what did he actually say when he removed those cards? Well, let's watch it again. Let me back it up. It's, it's, it's tremendous and- High end bamboozlery. Uh, yeah, right? <laughs> but actually this is not the top of the deck. See the All right, hang on. <laughs> <laughs> See, I'm just making it up as I go along. That's true. <laughs> yeah, that's right. And she knows, cause you tried, didn't you? You, you know? felt it? I didn't. You didn't? Look, I'll tell you what I'll do this that time. Like I will push the card tilt. forward about halfway. I won't use the whole deck. I'll it was? Yeah, you see he did tilt and then he just turned over the card. Yeah. He put that card in from the back and just turned it over. Yeah, he totally just did tilt, brought it to the top without... Up to this point. Without the effect. Without the effect at all. So <laughs> he literally just said, I'll push that one forward. I'll remove these over here and do That's it, it. half the cards. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> see, I'm just making it up as I go along. I can't even feel it move. Yeah, that's right. And she knows, because you tried, didn't you? You felt it? You look, you just did tilt. You didn't? And then look, did I'll tell you what I'll do this time. I will push the card forward about halfway. I won't use the whole deck. I'll just cover it with a few cards. Just a few like that. Uh, I'll push it in, give it a there it is. is. There it is. That. There it is. Yeah. He cut some from the bottom. There we go. He says he's going to take that card. He's going to push it forward. We're just going to use a few cards on top of it. <laughs> right? Good. But that's not the top of the top. So, oh, that's not the top of the top. That's the top of the middle. That's the top of the top. And of course, there it is. Awesome sauce. Yeah. Yeah, no doubt. So awesome. He really is Alex working the omnibus. He is be, that, he, Alex just called it. By the time Daryl said, here, I'll show you what I'm going to do. By the time that moment happens, right, Daryl is definitely relying upon the fact that he's done 10 effects and that you are overwhelmed to do more or less whatever sequences are pleasing to him. Whatever it takes. <laughs> I have right. never seen a magician do tilt as a get ready for a next phase. So he, he did it on the offbeat. Yeah. Traditionally, right. Yeah. And I, I wouldn't be surprised if he just flubbed and he just corrected himself, right? Like that was just the way to catch himself in the moment. I wouldn't be surprised by that for a second. That may be true. He right. didn't have time. He was in it. He was working. There's a camera on. If he'd had the time, he would have done a reverse like that. Or he would have said, look, you know that if I can put it in there and I snap my fingers, it comes back to the top. But if I use less cards, you know, it'll be easier to follow. You know, so he could have done any one of those things and knows all of them. You know, I've, but I think in the moment, he's just trucking, you know? Agreed. I mean, honestly, how many of you out there have done the ambitious card on autopilot? You know, at some point in your career, you're doing the ambitious card enough. Like who among you has not just done the tilt and sort of glossed over a phase because you needed to get ahead for the phase uh, you were thinking about doing? You know what? Eckhart just, I, this, this is tricky, but Eckhart just actually just, I think he just, uh, just nailed it. He actually didn't do the tilt. He actually no, he had to have the card second from the top, Adam. No, he has to have it on 
top. It has no. to be second from the top for that move to happen. It has so to be, Adam. Oh, he okay. Here and then he pushes it forward. Oh, right. okay. You're right. You're right. So it's got to be a double. No, Eckhart says it is on top. Well, we let's go ahead and watch it again because I'm not yeah. sure how that. Uh, it, it doesn't work if it's on top. You have to have it second from the top so you can do that Lorraine move. All right, let's let's run it back. Let me. A little snap. It jumps to the top. All right, so it is. Eckhart, we're so happy to be wrong. It happens every day. It's going to be about right. You have a winner. <laughs> Watch the card very closely. Oh, this is ways <laughs> better. <laughs> it goes into the middle, but to be even more fair, I will play. Yeah, you're right. Sorry. Off on the way. <laughs> <laughs> no, perhaps the deck didn't hear me. Here, let me start again. There's the 10. If I snap it oh, like this and give it a little good. squeeze, it turns into the two of hearts. Are there any questions up to this? That's probably about right. Okay. Yeah, that's <laughs> right. That and she knows, because you tried, didn't you? You felt it? I didn't. You didn't? Look, I'll tell you what yeah, I'll do this time. Double. I will push the card a, forward about halfway. Double. I won't use the whole deck. Yeah, so it was the tilt, Eckhart. Because that card's it, there. Yeah. That card is there, and he's getting ready to drop it on the top of the deck that's off the... You the know what, though? I'll tell you what. I think what he was actually doing, if you want to give him the benefit, is he was actually pretending to stick it on top from here and then turning the card over. I mean, I think the effect on the audience is equally unremarked on in either case. That's right, because right. once you turn it over, it's there. It doesn't matter how it got there, right? Yeah, so when I used to have to do something like that, I'd say, you know, you know, I, we know it can come to the top when you stick it in. But maybe if we, you know, and so I would cover that moment. But I think just as easily, he could have been pretending to be sliding it on top of the deck, like Alex says, and turning it over. You wouldn't, it, the amount of attention it would get from the audience was very much the same, right? That's right. Is it is no, it's not on top. It was second from the. It was definitely a. It was definitely sticking it second from the top, doing the double, pushing it forward, saying we'll bury it under just a few cards, and then there it was. Yeah, that's <laughs> right. And she knows because you tried, didn't you? You felt it. I did. You didn't? Look, I'll tell you what I'll do this time. I will push the card forward about halfway. I won't use the whole deck. I'll just cover it with a few cards. Just a few like that. I'll push it in, give a little snap. It jumps to the top. But actually, this is not the top of the deck. See, this is considered the top of the bottom half. The top of the deck would be this part over here. So watch the top of the deck, and you'll see it every single time. You really will. Oh. Uh, uh, don't say it. Don't say it. <laughs> I don't know what you're talking about. Let's just carry on. <laughs> Magic. I've actually never noticed it before until watching it right there, super close. Well, we are putting Daryl under a microscope, to be fair. Yeah. And to be fair, I guess we can point that no matter how much he's vamping, that phase is probably always there. Sure. So we'll discuss in a few moments. All right. Yeah. Good. I have an idea. To make this easier to follow, I will eliminate half of the pack. I won't even use those just half of the deck. In fact, would you take this yourself? All I'm going to do is riffle down the corner. Anytime you'd like, just say stop. I will stop, and I'll let you put the card in yourself. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Are you ready? Yeah. Face down. Anytime. Stop. Perfect. Face down like that. Watch. No moves, no tricks, no manipulations. It is not on the bottom. It is not on the top. It stays in the middle until I snap the fingers. Then it jumps up to the top once again. Now I'm going to push it in with one finger, because I really want you to see it. It goes in the middle. That's about halfway down. With one finger, I'll push it in. Watch. Until you do a little snap, it jumps up to the top once again. <laughs> now that was really good. <laughs> that was really good. Which, what part, what do you, which, which part were you... So he did, watching real had it on top and he upjogged it as if it was still in the middle of the deck. And then yeah, what that was? Play, that was that a for me. beautiful no, I was, I, thing. I, I, okay, that's what, show me, let's see it again. Rewind it 10 seconds for me because it was very fast and subtle. That's yeah, right. It was. It no was way you could very... see it unless you're looking. It, unless you have it under a microscope like we do. How could you even see it, right? You see, it goes in the middle. That's about halfway down. With one finger, I'll push it in. Watch. Uh, see that? And do a little snap. <laughs> that's amazing, it, right? That is good. One more time, one more time. That's a great phase. So got no manipulations, it is not on the bottom. It is not on the top, it stays in the middle until I snap the fingers, then it jumps up to the Here top once again. I'm going to push it in with one finger, because I really want you to see it. Goes in the middle, that's about halfway down. With one finger, I'll push it in. Watch. So you do a little snap, it jumps up to the top <laughs> once again. Now let me do this again, it goes in the middle.
Oh my so god. When did he push good. it flush? All right, guys. Real he really pushes it flush, and then he comes up and just lifts. I think it's just that pinky is lifting it up. Yeah, but does he push the it flush there, and then it's actually that's back? it. But that's it. So he's actually pushing it flush. Is he pushing it flush uh, as he's coming up, or is it beforehand? So the question is: Is he doing that and that, <laughs> or or is he literally somehow? Back. I think it's that. I think it's that. It's as he comes up. So it's as if it's the, the card is out jogged is the one he's showing. Let's watch one more time just to see when that first finger pushes in, if it pushes in on the way up or beforehand. That's all I want to see. There it is. I'm going to push it in with one finger because I really want you to see it. it goes in the middle. That's about halfway down. With one finger, I'll push it in. There it one. is. So you do a little snap, it jumps up to the top once again. <laughs> now let me do this again, it goes in the middle. <laughs> I'll turn this face up, that way you can see it's not on the top yet, not until I do the secret move. See, here's the secret move, a little tap and a snap and it's back <laughs> on top. Now when you do this, you can do it in slow motion, just place it on the table, cover it with all of these cards, snap, it still jumps up to the top of the deck. It's always on the top, but I have an idea to make this even easier to follow, tell you what I'm gonna do. I will eliminate a few more cards. <laughs> I will eliminate, eliminate all of these. That's all I can do. Now that's as few as I can use and still be able to place the card into the middle of the deck. Now it's a very thin deck, but the principle is the same. It goes in the middle, PG. it's sandwiched in from above and below until I push it like this, snap the fingers, it jumps to the top. I'll do this again. There's the card. It goes in the middle between the other two cards until I snap the fingers and then of course it jumps to the top position. Now, sometimes when I do this, I cheat. <laughs> Once I did this, and I did cheat by accident, I didn't place it in the middle. Instead, I actually put it on the bottom of the packet. That's okay, I snapped. It still jumps up to the top. It just had to go through two cards. And this works in anybody's hands. In fact, would you put your hand out like this, like a table? Watch closely. There is the card. Face down, off the top, into your hand. I will cover it with these cards. I'll even spread them out. All you have to do is snap your fingers. Perfect. That's good. Turn over the top card, let everybody see. We have another winner. So tell him what he just did there. I mean, he just went into the classic routine. Yeah, and he did multiple lift sequence, right? I mean, three cards. So that turned into the old, uh, you know, the $14 trick. What's it? Color Monte. Right. And then the double goes to the bottom and then that comes mm -hmm. like that. And then this one goes on your hand and then these two are spread out like that. Yeah. But so I, so he, no. no, I was going to say, so he took that. So he eliminates all the cards. He makes it very clear and very easy for the audience to understand, but he just, he just uh, took. Eliminates just, all the cards. Yeah. You so he it. just took, he just did Color Monte in the middle of an ambitious routine and it made it very very clear and very magical. That's, that's and, 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 I do a big finish with all the cards, right, Alex? And, and it makes it look like he's trying to help the spectators. I'm going to help you understand this a little bit easier. We'll use fewer cards. Too many cards. Too many cards. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh! Oh, we, oh, do we he's, have time? He's really, he's actually really. We are a little over, but he's really. You know what he's doing is he's putting as much of the book as possible into one routine. So I think we can assume that rather than be that a working routine, this is sort of Darrow's, Darrow's total clearinghouse routine for all of his favorite stuff. It's the whole ambitious card omnibus book in one routine, <laughs> pretty much. The winners, you know. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> wow. Hmm. You know, there may be some suspicious folks out there. <laughs> Quite honestly, there's only two ways that this can be done, or two categories of methods. One is it could be sleight of hand. Another is it could be a trick. <laughs> that is to say, maybe before the show I had you sign a duplicate two of hearts. That's not the case. So just to make this card extra unique, <laughs> ah, <laughs> perhaps you'd care to help out. Would you put your initials or your signature on the front of the card as well? What we're going to do is have several people sign the card. That way we know there's no possible chance of having a duplicate. And to make sure that I'm not using any sleight of hand, what I'm going to do is wrap the deck with rope. Please do. Watch very closely. I am going to sleight of hand proof the pack. And the best way to do that is to wrap it up with rope. 
Now, there's no way to perform sleight of hand with a deck that has been wrapped with rope. I know, <laughs> because I've tried. <laughs> it just cannot be done. So Many have tried, and passed. several were seriously injured in the attempt. <laughs> Look at that. That puppy's all tied up. Now, that's sleight of hand proofed. Is there a card out there? <laughs> we'll say, oh, no, please, please. Enjoy. Relax. <laughs> and just for fun, would you sign the card as well? And sign it on the back. On the back, just in case. That's good. Any kind of identifying mark will be fine. And let's have that back. Oh, look at that. There's no way I could have a duplicate of that puppy. So the deck has been sleight of hand proofed with the rope. And the card has been signed by, what, 20, 30 people. <laughs> <laughs> and to make it even more unique, let's tear off a corner. How about like that? <laughs> I think that should be pretty convincing. <laughs> that is the only one. The deck has been sleight of hand proofed. The card that's been signed by 20 or 30 people goes into the center of the deck, and that really is the middle, isn't it? That really is. I haven't cheated yet, <laughs> but it's coming up. <laughs> Watch. I'd like to see this one myself. <laughs> that is the middle of the deck. It does go in. Is that still in the middle? Still the signed card? Yeah. Watch inside all the way not yet hasn't gone through yet watch two of hearts all the way in look all i have to do is snap the fingers <gasps> yes i felt it <laughs> you'll have to take my word for it but i did i felt it one card rises to the top can you take a little peek under there that is definitely the top card. It is signed on the front, it is signed on the back, and just for those who are extra suspicious, it has the missing corner. Ladies and gentlemen, that's the mystery. Of the ambitious card. I don't know, that ending is pretty tough to beat. I really like the, the card to impossible location, but that impossible coming to the top, that rope thing is really something. It's impossible. I, don't know. I haven't thought about it for a few years. It might be worth doing again. Well, you know, Alex, we were just talking about that phase that is important where we stick that double in and people can see its face. That's really important. And the only thing that could make it more important is if it were plain as day that that was the signed card and it could be touched and felt in just the way you could feel it happening. You know, I mean, he was really getting maximum poop out of that. Right? And that's uh, really the thing. And the thing that makes it so, I think, the thing that really ties it together that we really saw here is how that entire routine is built to create that moment. So that, that, that the modus operandi of Daryl's Ambitious Card Climax, which I, is now back on the market, right? Actually, that's I right. Yeah, you can you can buy them again. They make them in red and blue, and it's uh, it's great, right? I remember making it be because it was in the book. Because at the time I made it, it wasn't there. There was no such thing as a commercially available version of it, and I had to make the thing. But you know, as you guys know, I, I'm a DIY freak. I love making magic tricks, so it was not that big of a deal for me. But to have one professionally made. I mean, I, I'm honestly thinking about buying it again because I want one in red and one in blue. I'm that guy that likes to pick the night I'm doing a show. You know, which color am I going to choose? And to have a gap for either one, that's that's a pretty cool thing. You know, I'm, I'm, uh, I, I haven't thought about this for a lot of years. And I really think I might might start playing with this tied up deck again thing. I, I really forgot how, how much impact it really has. It's such a good thing, man. Alex, does it work with a stranger card? It, like if it was like a different or different back design, you mean? Yeah, say that I my deck is my deck and I've got like a purple card in here and I was doing it. Would you get to that moment and have it work or would it be a little iffy? It could be iffy, but I could also see that you might be able to block it that it wouldn't be a big deal. You know, as long as you keep that top of the deck tilted towards you until the moment of truth, you probably could get away with it. Probably, but it would be a stretch. I don't think it would be a stretch. I think you just have to block it. I think you just have to think about it knowing that that's, you know, what that end result that you're going for is like that. Yeah, exactly. So the thing is, y'all, he, when he goes into that packet phase, that packet phase allows him to take the rest of the cards and place them with the deck and then complete it. And then to finish, he does one more phase with the whole deck. And I think that's, Part of, I think, when you're looking, I think what we just saw was a good deal of 
part of Daryl's FISM Act, one of Daryl's FISM Acts, isn't it? It would have to be. Yeah. And there is an architecture in there which is so deceptive and fooling so that by the time he gets to that ending, there's absolutely nothing. I mean, Daryl knew how to do magic for magicians. Too many well. cards, too many cards. Let's put some away. It's perfect, right? And so many phases stack up so that you are, you're being fooled on some. Uh, that when you're not being fooled, you're being mesmerized by the pace and the energy and the sheer uh, density of it. But then you're really being uh, diverted with your blinders on so that at the big finish, you're just taken down. It's so beautiful. It's such a great routine. Daryl is just, you know, what a, what a lovely guy and what a, well, master magician, just like Pop. He was a master magician. He's as good as you can be. Yeah, I, I love Daryl. It's wonderful that he left all these artifacts for us to learn from, right? I mean, what a great thing. We, we miss Daryl. You know, he was a friend. He was a teacher. When I got to party with him when I was moved out to Las Vegas when I was 20 years old and Daryl came over to hang out at Lee Asher's apartment in the afternoon, it was like I felt like one of my lifetime dreams was coming true. He was a dear friend and uh, losing him was a, a real tragedy. Uh, and it's... It's bittersweet, but really a good thing that his best magic is being re-released now. Yeah, it is. You're right. Guys, thanks for joining us today for Afternoon Astonishment. If you, uh, if you are watching on our YouTube channel, please like uh, and subscribe to our channel and hit that little bell so you'll be notified when we go live again, which we're going to do very soon because this is the most fun we can have during the day 